Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Freely forever. Thank you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Well, the good news is that the temperature is risen one degree since I got here.
Jonah had an encounter with the living God. When Jonah was vomited up, guess what he did? He went to Nineveh. Now, God doesn't generally speak that loudly in our lives unless he really, really wants to get our attention. Apparently, God had, had uh, nurtured Jonah into going, into being a prophet, to go to Nineveh. He had purposed him for that, and there was no one else to do the job. And I think the same is true of St. Paul. God had anointed Paul to do this work for the church, even though he was working against the church. He had set him up for this. And even though Paul was resistant, God came along and that was that. He intervened in his life. They both had supernatural experiences with God. So we as Christians need to examine our circumstances too to keep our spiritual antennas up, to be alert to what God is doing in and around us. Are any of you familiar with a, with a book by Henry Blackaby called Experiencing God? It's, Blackaby's whole premise for the book is that Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. We must also be tuned into what the Father is doing around us and join him in that. That is being aware of our circumstances and watching for God in to move in certain situations. It's seeing something that's unusual coincidences, if you will. Lord, are you trying to tell me something? It's saying, what's happening in my life right now that, that God might be communicating with? It's, it's, why am I having that little nudge to do this? And why won't it go away? It's these coincidences. I'll say it, I've said it many times, but there are no coincidences in the kingdom of God. When things just all seem to come together. When you see a number repeatedly, you may see the number, I don't know, 137, repeatedly. You may walk, wake up in the middle of the night, 137, four nights in a row, okay, Lord, you got my attention. What are you trying to say to me? It may be a repeated word. It may be circumstances falling into place. Some things that seem to be, that would seem to be random, but God doesn't work in random. God works in plan. God reveals himself through these coincidences in our lives. And having our spiritual antenna up and tuned into those helps us better to serve him and to join him in what he's doing. <coughs> also, God can speak to us in impressions. Sometimes there's just something sitting on your heart you just sense that you should do something. And again, that feeling just won't go away. And if we keep our spiritual antenna up and tune into the Holy Spirit, we'll be more open to God speaking to us this way. God can also speak to us through people. Sometimes people will say something to us that just kind of clicks with us, just kind of hits us, and you know, you know that you know that God is speaking through this person. I remember, it was a couple, three years ago, and I was having a difficult day, and, and I stepped into the car, turned the car on, and the CD player comes on, and it says, don't stop believing. God, God, Lord, thank you. So God can even speak through secular songs. And occasionally, we will have somebody speak to us a prophetic word. And again, we examine that word, we make sure that it's biblical, we pray that it's for us, and then if it is, then we act on it. We must be careful of those who say, thus saith the Lord. And those who say, well, God wants you to do this. Well, you know, I can, I can figure that out. You know, God's big enough to tell me to that he wants me to do something. Rather from a prophetic person, we should hear the words, I sense God wants me to tell you this. And that gives you the opportunity to accept or, or reject it. 
A prophet should never force a prophetic word upon you. They're to deliver it, and that's it. And a true prophet of the Lord will approach you with humility. A true prophet of the Lord is never arrogant. They know their responsibility, and they know that they can be wrong. We can all be wrong in what we think we've heard from the Lord. Another way that the Lord communicates to us, of course, is through dreams and visions. Don't dismiss your dreams. Sometimes we do have fleshy dreams. But often they're communications from God. And a fleshy dream is an example of where you're kind of waking up in the middle of the night and you're dreaming that you have to go to the bathroom and then you wake up and you really do have to go to the bathroom. That's an example of a fleshy dream. In Psalm 16, verse 7, we read, I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. David is saying here that God speaks to us through our dreams. And if we look at the Bible, there's example after example after example of people hearing from God through dreams and then acting on them. So be tuned into what God may be saying in your dreams and in visions. So how, and how, do I do, how do I know what he's saying to me in this really strange dream? Well, Ask him, what are you saying to me, Lord? Talk about it with other Christians. Well, how will I know when I finally got the interpretation right? You will know. Your spirit will lead. There'll be something in you that says, that's it. That's it. Dreams are a major element in Scripture. We know Joseph, Solomon, Jacob. Joseph, Jesus' adopted father. Peter, John, Paul. And Peter tells us in Acts 2.17, In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters, that's us, shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Of course, Peter is quoting the prophet Joel there. The Lord also speaks to us in our thoughts. In Amos 4.13 we read, For behold, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what is his thought, who makes the morning darkness and treads on the heights of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. So God can speak to us through our thoughts and our minds. However, of course, not every thought is from God. We must determine where the thought came from. We can have our own thoughts. We can have the enemy's thoughts. We must be discerning about this stuff. Obviously, if you have a thought to, I know you've heard of these people, these women who have put their kids in their car and driven into a lake or something like that, and then said, well, God made me do that. No, no. It has to line up with Scripture. It has to line up with the character of God. God can speak to us through nature also. Romans 1 clearly tells us that God speaks through creation. God speaks to us through mountains and waters and trees and animals. In Psalm 19, we read, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. In John 12, 27, God spoke to Jesus. If you remember, some folks thought it was an angel. Some folks thought it was thunder. Some people had their spiritual antenna up to know that it was from God. We must do the same. Remember Moses in the burning bush. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. Now, I guess from what I understand, a burning bush was not unusual in the Sinai Desert. What was unusual is that it didn't burn up. So Moses saw this, went to it, God spoke to him through this, through nature. And then there's Balaam being spoken through a donkey, to a donkey, which is the most bizarre story, one of the most bizarre stories in the Bible. Really? A donkey speaking? Maybe God was trying to make a bigger point there. And of course, God can speak to us through Scripture. Scripture always speaks to us. And God can use a specific passage to speak to us. One, we've all had the experience where a passage of Scripture jumps off the page. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Bible is living and active. So 
Well, I ask you the question. Do you read the Bible with your spiritual antenna up? Do you realize that we are reading a book that is living and active? It's something to keep in mind. Do we approach the, the Bible as a book where God is speaking to us personally? In Proverbs 4.20, a wonderful verse, which I'm sure we've all heard many times. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. And then, of course, God can speak to us through meditation. He can speak to us through meditating on a passage of the Bible. Um, on, when we meditate on His greatness, focusing on Him instead of our problem. And what i found is that often God gives us the solution to the problem that we're dealing with when we stop focusing on Him, it, and start focusing on Him. We need to remember that the spiritual world is a greater reality than this one. And this really is what is meant by walking in the Spirit is by having our spiritual antenna up and tuned into what God is doing and what He's saying to us. Being acutely aware of God's presence at all times. If we want to hear God's voice, we need to be listening. I remember as, as a young Christian, I struggled to hear God's voice. I so wanted to hear God speak to me. God, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. And there would be nothing. And I just, you know, I could not, I just not couldn't seem, seem to break through this barrier. And then I finally realized that God had been speaking to me all along, and I just hadn't been tuned in. And what a marvelous revelation that was. How it changes your life. So God is speaking to you, even though you may not think it. He is speaking to you through thoughts. And the thoughts are going to sound a lot like your own sometimes. Through circumstances, in nature, through people, through the Bible. He's constantly speaking to us. If God doesn't speak to us and we don't speak to Him, it's really not much of a relationship, is it? In order for there to be a relationship, we need to communicate. Imagine having a relationship with your spouse where you never talk to them. Probably wouldn't go over very well with it. In Jeremiah 7, 13, the Lord issues a warning to the nation of Israel. He says, And now because you have done all these things, declares the Lord, and when I spoke to you persistently, you did not listen, and when I called you, you did not answer. God is saying to the Israelites that He was speaking to them repeatedly about their need to repent and change their course. But they did not listen to Him. If you read through the book of Jeremiah sometime, you can see, you can just sense the frustration with Jeremiah. Because he's delivering the word of the Lord and people don't want to hear it. They lock him up. They throw him in a cistern. They do all sorts of things to him. He's just saying what the Lord wants them to hear, but they won't listen. We need to be listening, alert, that God may speak to us at any time. I've noted many people who have had personal encounters with the Lord, life-changing personal encounters, and they've happened during the most mundane times. People will be walking along a sidewalk and have an encounter with God, or people will be mowing the lawn and having an encounter with God. Feeding the dog. God can speak to us at any time, but we must be tuned in. To be honest with you, I'd really rather not have an experience like Jonah had. <clears throat> you think about it. Wherever we go, whatever we do, wherever we're awake, we have to have our spiritual antennas up and ready to hear from God. Because He is speaking. He is speaking constantly. He wants to have that deep relationship with us. He wants to communicate with us. We speak, He speaks. He speaks, we listen. That's key. Amen. Amen. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He just...
testify freely 